Hi everyone, my name is Rowan Ray and I work at AB InBev. When I joined the then SAB Miller in 2012, I was a young, starry-eyed kid. I was an untouched control and automation virgin. I worked at uh, Shamdor, Brewery in Krugersdorp for five years, so I've had the privilege of working with a lot of the people in the audience, and only very recently moved over to the head office in Bryanston, that's the Africa the Africa headquarters in Bryanston about just over a year ago. I am a tech supply specialist. Yes, it's a job title that is in equal parts interesting and confusing. When I initially arrived at SAB, my concept of data transmission was literally handing an Excel sheet via USB flash drive to one of your mates. That has changed drastically with incredible need for accurate, accessible and real-time data. Over the years, it has been a privilege to work with guys like Vaughn, Graham, Yaku, and Lenny. Um, and with their help, we've improved our data integrity and the way that we collect data. I would like to share our experiences with a tiered approach. The past, the present, and the future. It is so important to know where, have be, where you have been, what worked, what didn't work, in order to correctly plot your course into the future. AB InBev needed to migrate from a fairly disjointed collection of breweries throughout Africa to a unified zone where comparisons can be made like for like. Top of mind was standardization in regional routines and reporting, improving efficiency at plant level and getting the data to a central location in a unified format for short interval control. Prior to SAB Miller being acquired by AB InBev, there was a slightly neglectful approach to the breweries where we, that were spread across the African continent versus the ones in, located in South Africa. We dedicated a lot of time and resources to the South African breweries. Because there are only seven breweries and a couple of vertical operations, namely our maltings plants and our hop farms, the way we handled regional data and then subsequently cascaded up to the zone was very much based Excel at the, at the plants, and then simple file share systems set up between regional servers and a zonal server. Yes, there was a, a database replication and subscription method tracked in there every now and then. Very little focus was put on the rest of Africa, as I mentioned earlier. They were largely left to their own devices with paper-based systems and Excel um, you know, taking, taking the four there. As you can see with this methodology, there are a couple of pain points. It's inefficient with multiple employees using different systems. Data can also be lost or corrupted incredibly easily. Imagine you're an operator, you're sitting at your desk, you've just filled out a, a paper-based shift report. You go and you get, a, get some lunch, eat it at your desk, you toss all the waste away. There goes your shiftly report. By mistake, but there's your shiftly report, gone. Also, a single point of truth tends to be incredibly difficult to implement. This is where I bring up the topic of what I like to refer to as Excel graveyards. We all know how it works. You go to, you're at your plant and, and you speak to your manager and you've got to go and log your KPIs on your, your Excel spreadsheet called KPI dashboard. He tells you which file location to go into and you open it up and before you know it, there's KPI dashboard version one, KPI dashboard version two, KPI dashboard version three underscore copy. Or well, my personal favorite where people feel that they, they have to put a little bit of a signature to it is KPI dashboard version three underscore Kevin. With the acqu acquisition of SAB Miller, a really positive, all-encompassing approach was taken. Instead of a South Africa versus the rest of Africa, a renewed focus was placed on one Africa. With this came the need for proven ways of work in a daily, weekly, and monthly routines, and the reporting that went with it. Unfortunately, with the neglect over the years and the bump up from seven to 28 breweries, there were bound to be pain points. Namely, there was incredibly poor KPI standardization across the plants. You'd head up to Uganda or up to Accra, and you'd find that they were reporting 10 to 40 KPIs, where, you know, depending on the plant, and there were different KPIs that they were reporting on. We needed to streamline this and define a standard set of KPIs that are proven to be really beneficial for plant optimization. 
There was also poor standardization within the KPI definitions themselves. As I said earlier, you'd head up to a plant and find that they have line efficiency. Perfect. Head up to another plant and they'd also have line efficiency. You think they're reporting the same thing. But in the background, the calculations are completely different. We needed to find a way to lock that down. And lastly, it was incredibly difficult to get the correct data up to zone headquarters for analysis. There was incredibly slow uh, transfer of data. At best, we were looking at monthly data being fed up from the regions up to the zone. And plenty of time was subsequently spent by middle management putting all this data together in a, a unified format. So to the rescue, flow. Phase one was f rolling out flow to all of our plants across Africa. A flow instance was created and training was given regarding the user interface with the initial KPI dashboards that we rolled out. We immediately noticed a, a decrease in, in, in Excel for reporting purposes. The problems that were resolved with this phase one or the tier one approach, employees were now entering data into the same tool on site. There was automated, automated data entry where possible, namely at our South, Af South African plants or at some of our newer plants like Maraquen in Mozambique or Gateway in, in Nigeria where we've got integrated and connected systems. We can pull data automatically into flow. There's also an order trail of who, when and why a piece of data was entered. Operators are now more efficient because they no longer have to enter data into four different Excels or on paper and then Excel afterwards. There's a single source of the truth. Phase two was to utilize the template functionality within Flow. So a template Flow instance was set up at, at, at zonal headquarters. We call it our TS, our template server. We developed standardized KPIs, which took the form of metrics and measures, measures being your daily, your weekly, and your monthly that corresponded to defined departmental reports. So every department has a, has a certain way of working at the breweries, where they start off with a daily meeting, say in brewing or packaging or maintenance, and then that, that data through flow will feed up to an overall plant meeting, which typically happens at around 10, 10 o'clock or half past 10 in the morning. All brewery instances had the template server configured on, on their regional instances that the tier one systems as, template, uh, as a template server. And we then pushed down these KPIs, pushed down these measures and these metrics. And the reports and dashboards along with the forms were then pushed down to the plants via SQL script. The problems that were resolved during phase two standardization was the biggest one. Standardization of KPIs across Africa. We now knew who was reporting what and when. Along with that, the KPI definitions themselves were locked. Within the template server, you can enter a calculation. No more need for a ratio or a, a complicated calculation differing between certain plants. You lock it down at the template server and then you push that down. You now know that you're comparing like for like and you can focus your attention on a specific brewery. This is just an example of one of our dashboards. This is from our plant in Dola, one of our plants in Indo called Ndola in Zambia. Um, as you can see, there's a little bit of data. This is their weekly plant meeting. And we have our KPIs down the left-hand side, little subsections, your safety, environment, quality, and all of that data, is, that, that's weekly data, but the weekly data would come from daily data. Moving on to phase three, this is where the tier two system comes in. Regional data replicating up to the zone. A flow instance was created at zone headquarters, which we call our Africa reporting server or our, or our RS. Bulk, bulk replication was configured from all of the sites through Africa up to the, the central RS. Just to give you a bit of context here, one of our African breweries typically has about somewhere between seven and a half thousand to 10,000 measures running in it. We are replicating 120,000 data points up to our, our report server. Each site posts the data up um, whenever it, the, the data point changes. This is important. The tier one servers, the regional servers, are responsible for, for replicating the data upwards. This means that your data is always accurate. You always have data as it's entered at the plants. Problems resolved, the data comes through in the same format on already constructed dashboards. There's no need for middle management to now collect the data from all the different plants and put it together in a nice, a nice zonal dashboard. No, 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 no. That's already configured and all the data automatically feeds into it. 
Data is also replicated to the zone within minutes of changing at the brewery. Analysis is rapid, and upper level management can make the decisions a lot quicker for plant improvement. Data, as I mentioned earlier, is also the latest data. If I go four weeks back and change, change a data point, that change data point will replicate up to the zone. Here's an example of one of our zonal dashboards. This is all replicated data that you're seeing over here, and it replicates, as I mentioned, within five to 10 minutes. Here we have the West Africa plant meeting, and we wanted, by design, to keep the look and feel of a zonal dashboard the same as our plant dashboards. We also believe in transparency, so anyone from any plant throughout Africa can log on and see how other plants are doing. The idea is that you start sharing good, good practices and you start trying to get rid of your, of your red cells, as we can see over here. I know it might seem like rainbows and butterflies, but everyone in this room knows that that's not how projects go. So I wanted to just take you through a couple of issues that we've experienced. During phase one, or the, the tier one systems, some plants that were being forced into reporting what they didn't feel was necessary. Teething issues with initial KPIs, we had incorrect units of measure, we had incorrect limit directions, um, aggregation, average or sum was, was incorrect. In some cases, not the whole dashboards. But, and then people by nature are gener generally quite averse to change. And just as an aside note, I think that this is one of the, one of the hurdles that we all face in our industry. This innate fear to deviate from the status quo. I think that it's all of our responsibility to try and make the future, make data, make tech really, not only attractive, but really valuable to the people who are trying to, trying to influence. But anyway, um, let me talk about how we, how we resolve these issues. We tackled these through a really unified approach. All departments you know, were brought into this, the, this understanding of, of what the KPI dashboards were all about. And typically, isn't this true with everything, when you show people value in something, they easily take it on board. As soon as the guys could see that they only have to enter data once and bang, it's up at the plan meeting, they, they bought into it, uh, you know, wholeheartedly. We also developed a standard management of change, change process. So where we had issues with dashboards or where we wanted to change the look and feel of certain dashboards, we, every six months, we will sit down with the department heads and we'll review the dashboards and push those revised dashboards down to the, down to the plants. Phase two and the issues that we faced, initially changing templates proved to be quite cumbersome and, and, and just quite challenging. The forms and the, and the dashboards need to be pushed down to the regions via a SQL script as those components are not yet templatized within Flow. And the speed of pushing the templates down is heavily dependent. I mean, it makes sense, right? But they're heavily dependent on the network infrastructure between template server and the regional tier one servers. How we got through these? Flow software really jumped to, the, jumped to the, our, our aid, uh, Vaughan. He's now my best buddy. I've got him on speed dial. But um, he really helped put together scripts that pushed down, um, pushed down the, the reports and the dashboards. And it's definitely on Flow's roadmap to make those templatized um, components. So phase three and the issues that we faced there with, with our tier two server. Replication was initially an issue with the sheer amount of data. As, as I said, we've got 120,000 data points replicating up to the this, this server. The speed of the reporting server was slow with many of the resources being taken up for that integration processing. So how we dealt with these, uh, Flow software jumped on it and within a couple of weeks they, they had released um, uh, patches whereby the actual integration engine that they utilize or, or that we utilize, there were lots of optimizations done and now replication is is a lot better and we're receiving that data on time. Also, we just beefed up our server. So we've got our reporting server that runs 66 gigs of RAM and about 12 CPUs. I've told you about the past, the present, where we're at now, and, and now I'd just like to touch on the future. Data and its value needs to be realized through visualization. You can have plenty of data, but if you never see it and you, and you never know where it is, it becomes meaningless. We have a central flow system set, server set up now that has plenty of data that we can utilize. We are looking at using graphical tools within flow a lot more. Maybe because we, we've just never played with, played with those tools before, we are now going to start you know, using them a lot more. Stuff like the scatter plots, 
bullet charts. Um, we're already doing a lot of nice work with, uh, with a project that we've just finished where we are pulling up our energy and fluids data from all of the plants. Literally, just to put this in context, we're literally pulling from a sensor or from a, an operator's manual entry up through the control layer into your tier one system, replicate it up to the tier two system, and then we're actually going to be handing it on to another, another database where we can visualize that data using ClickSense or Power BI. As I mentioned, Flow admittedly does not seek to be a Power BI or a ClickSense. The answer is to post data through to a database using the, the consumer uh, functionality on the report server. And as I said, we, we're doing that right now. And then we data to the cloud. It's a standardized way of posting data to the cloud via MTT consumer. Flow ha have rapidly taken on this industry standard, which is awesome. There's no more SQL database replication and no more Excel dumps where I need to Excel dump from this plant and that plant and then send that through to someone to interrogate it. Further to that, companies are shooting up rapidly that specialize in AI and the utilization of data. This is an amazing advancement in our industry. It means that people like yourselves and I do not need to be experts in AI. All we need to do is get the data to people that are. We are also busy dealing with our global team where we're going to be sending them data, very probably via MQTT. And then we are also engaging with reverse osmosis and water treatment firms that are seeking to use the data from our water treatment plants to reduce our brewery maintenance costs. After all that, the most important takeout is that partnerships are essential. They are necessary within and in between companies. Flow Software and Element 8 have continually supported us in this journey, often pushing us with our partners, we will continue moving forward into a limitless future. Thank you.